Hi, shalom, friends. One of the most beloved metaphors of uh, King Solomon is uh, the following. I have seen the excellence of wisdom over folly as darkness excels over, I'm sorry, over, as light excels over darkness or from darkness. And this idea of equating wisdom with light is something that we could understand very well. And it became part of our language. So I see the light, or the, sometimes there's an expression, the fool walks in darkness. Very few of us would, would pick uh, the option of sitting in a dark room when we could have access to electricity. One would imagine that if we had access to wisdom, we would choose that over folly. And yet, we don't always see that. Now, I'm not going to minimize the value of darkness. In fact, many of us can't sleep unless it's dark. And sleep is crucial. It has been said that part of the chronic sleep deprivation that seems to be pervasive in the Western world is because we have light accessible 24-7. So the natural rhythm of night and day, darkness and light, has been disrupted. But still, though there's an importance of, of sleep, all of us understand that at a time when one should be awake and walks around in a stupor and is in a sleepy mode that's not very conducive or helpful for humanity. So I want to talk a little bit about this concept of wisdom being likened to light and foolishness to darkness. You know, um, there are times when we like darkness so we could see a, a picture, a moving picture. If you want to watch a movie, very often you dim the lights or the lights are completely closed. When you walk into a movie theater, essentially it's dark. The darker it is, the more alive the picture seems to be that's being projected. Now imagine a person who's always prepared for every emergency, so he comes into the theater with a flashlight, just in case he loses something. And here he is, he's looking at the picture on the wall, and he, he's, he's struck with a brilliant idea. If the flashlight will help him see better, maybe he should take the flashlight and, and shine it on the moving screen. So he takes out his powerful flashlight and shines it on the screen, and everyone shouts at him, Fool! Fool! Put away the light! What they're really saying is, here, darkness is better than light. Bringing light in a theater ruins the picture. Now, you could play with this idea. And that is, there are many times in life where, where someone wants to brighten our life, illuminate us, share with us something that will make things clearer. We shout at him, say, leave it. Go away. Stop it. You're badgering me. You're bothering me. You're making me feel guilty. I want to see myself. I want to see my picture in darkness. <clears throat> Why do we pick, at times, darkness over light? They say a fable. When the Almighty God created man and created him in a unique manner, where this man would have the option of choosing good over evil and truth over falsehood and indeed light over darkness. In order for the man to have this power to choose, he needed two forces. One force that would encourage to the side of wisdom and of good and one force that re would represent um, the forces of evil and darkness. And these two forces were under the control of an angel. So we have an angel of light, an angel of darkness, an angel 
of life and an angel of death. And as God gave the task to these two angels, the angel of death protested and said, Almighty God, you want me to go tempt people. You want me to entice people. You want me to present to people a viable option of being involved in darkness and by them refusing me, they will be rewarded. But you know something? If I represent myself as the angel of death and the angel of darkness, no one will listen to me. So there's really no freedom to choose at, at all. There's the, the angel of life who's fighting what? An angel of death? No one's going to follow the angel of death. So the Almighty said, okay, we'll change your name. You're not anymore called the angel of death. We'll call you the angel of adversity or the angel of opposition. And the angel says to the Almighty, who's going to want to follow an angel that says oppose God? No one's going to want to do that. He says, okay, fine. We'll call you the angel of the animal. And you'll be able to come and say to a person, don't listen to that other angel that wants, that's appealing to your humanity and the angel inside of you. No, listen to me. I represent the animal. God, that's not fair. Animals have no respect. So God then said to this angel, well, if you don't like any of the names that I'm calling you, what name do you think would camouflage your mission enough to entice people? And the angel thought for a moment and said, I know, why not call me self? S-E-L-F, or ego. And God said, that's good. You may take that name. And the fable ends by saying, since that day that the angel of death, the angel of darkness, the angel of animal, the angel of opposition, turned itself into the angel of self and ego, it's never found wanting. It's always busy and puts up more than its share of opposition to the angel of life. You see, when a person is filled with the self and filled with his ego, he resists changing. He resists being taught. And he especially resists being taught that he's walking in darkness. So he's in that movie theater and he's watching himself projected on the wall and he sees himself larger than life. He's so handsome, so smart, so wonderful, so vibrant, so alive in the movie. And then someone comes and puts a flashlight and says, Mr. Selfish, he says, put out that light. I like the picture. I like the moving picture. I want to stay in darkness. But the Almighty has a lot of Rahmanas, a lot of compassion upon us. And He gave us a Torah. And actually the Torah is a book of light. Literally. You open up the Torah and your life becomes filled with knowledge. It becomes filled with correctness. Of truth, actually. And at times, it becomes a bit uncomfortable. You read the book, the flashlight is shining on you, and you realize that the picture that you have of yourself, your ego, is not really reality at all. Over here we are taught that there is an excellence of light over darkness. There's an excellence, a superiority of, of wisdom over folly. Soon we'll be celebrating the festival of lights. That's called Hanukkah. What, what a festival it is. Lights. The power to brighten your world and the power to brighten others. 
With what? With a mitzvah. With what? With a word of God. With what? With the Holy Torah itself. Shalom, friends. May we always walk in light.